Gasper, what were your thoughts on the Patriots doing nothing at the deadline? Yeah, I think you look at the two teams that are going to play on Sunday at Gillette Stadium and you see the juxtaposition there. One is willing to accept their plight, accept their reality, and the other one is in denial. You know, I think the commanders accept the fact that they're probably at best a middle of the pack team and that if they want to really contend, they have to sort of, if not start over, uh, at least, you know, tack in a different direction. Whereas the Patriots, I, I think, are just unwilling to accept. I think Bill Belichick unwilling to accept the reality of who they are and what they are. And I just look at it and say, okay, so if you keep, if you keep, you know, Duggar and Awenu, which I can sort of see, right? I, I get it. You know, you can make a case. Personally, I would have dealt them off for draft capital for a number of reasons. Uh, I would say high on the list being the fact that you have a ton of cap space going into this off season. If you were going to sign them, you would have signed them by now. And if you sign other free agents and they leave the way the compensatory formula works is you, you might not get really anything for them. And even if you get something for them, it won't be until 2025, but fine. You want to keep them because they are starters and they are good players. So what's the advantage for you as a team? If you end up with seven wins instead of five, or you end up with eight wins instead of six, what does that do for you at the end of the day? in terms of moving you closer to contending for championships again. I just don't see the upside. And the other thing I'll say about it too, and I said this the other day on your show with Holly, and you know, Holly just sort of harped on the fact that they used their own pick to draft Demario Douglas, but they drafted two receivers in the sixth round. They drafted Demario Douglas and Kayshawn Booty. So one of those picks wasn't their pick. So I don't want to hear anything about Douglas or Booty if they play well from the people basically saying, well, I wouldn't have dealt those guys if all I was going to get back is a fifth or sixth round pick. If that's what you're telling me, that those picks don't mean anything, that I don't want to hear about guys you drafted in the sixth round or the seventh round or the fifth round, like, you know, a Dan Copen. I don't want to hear about any of those guys and how that's how you do it so much better because those picks apparently are irrelevant and have no value. And there's more value to winning eight games instead of six or to winning, you know, eight games instead of five, apparently, than trying to actually build towards something that means something. So so my view on that, Chris, is that the commanders shouldn't be held up here as some sort of model. Like, the commanders got it right. I would never do that. In fact, I think the reason the commanders sold is because they're the commanders. They're losers. And losings become okay. And that's sort of the slippery slope that you inhibit there when you intentionally try and lose. And that's what I think they're doing. And that's why they're losers. And I would not want to be that team. So I know it's sort of an intangible thing. You're talking about more about, I understand. I'm like, I get it. Lose a few more games, get a higher draft pick. That's better for the future. I'm looking more at just sort of the juice, the karma, the karma behind the whole thing. You start doing that. You start being that. You become that. That's what the commanders are. That's how I yeah, look at it. So, so here's what I say. First of all, the commanders have a new owner. So he's not attached to that, you know, losing. You can't blame that losing on him. And also, aren't the Patriots the franchise that maximizes value? Can't you look at the commanders and say they maximize? I, I'm not I'm not advocating tanking. This is where I think people get confused and it gets conflated. I don't want the Patriots to tank. I'm not saying intentionally lose. If I thought they could sign these guys, I'd say keep them. But I don't think they're going to sign them. So why let them walk for, for nothing? Well, again, you know, you're saying like, okay, there's some sort of karma thing. So uh, two years ago, you won 10 games and made the playoffs. Did you build off that last year? Last year, you went into the regular season finale. If you won, you made the playoffs. Have you built off that this year? There's no connection. You're not building anything. There's nothing. There is no good karma. There is nothing that you're building towards. Uh, tanking is intentionally trying to lose. I, I look at what Washington done, did. I don't think they're intentionally trying to lose games. I just think they looked at what they were building and said, this isn't good enough. We're probably not going to sign these guys and we don't want to invest in them. And if we do invest in them, even though we like them as players, it's not really going to change our plight in the NFL. We have to try something different. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I mean, it's kind of the old Masnos, the old, you know, Ralph Kiner line from Branch Ricky with the Pirates. Ralph, we can finish last with you. We can finish last without you. You can finish. You can be last in the AFC, the conference with Michael Wenu or last without him. I could be last in the AFC with Kyle Duggar or last without him. What am I really losing? Your soul is what you're losing. It's I mean, it's just sort of how I look at it. I mean, you know that. I feel that way about most sports in, yeah. in most times, unless you're the worst team in the NBA and Victor Wembanyama is sitting there, yeah. you know, but, al always try and win. But you're also Mr. Scoreboard, ultimately championship. Scoreboard, scoreboard, scoreboard. So I don't, I don't understand. That's the part I don't understand why you tag anybody that makes a move that says, 
hey, you know what? We're going to look to the future. Let's try and win all the games we can this year. But we realize we're not going to sign these guys. Let's try and look at the big picture. I don't know why you tag that as tanking and why you're enamored with the idea of winning seven or eight games when you're Mr. Scoreboard Championship. And we, you talk about this on the show all the time. The worst place to be is in the middle. Yeah, no. So, so well, but I don't, I, 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 don't I, don't necess- I don't necessarily believe that. You don't hear me talk about that all the time. I think it's okay to build from the middle. I prefer building from okay. the middle. I think, right. you can, I think you can do it. In fact, I think you can do it. In, uh, in football, anyway, you can. The NBA, you might be right. Uh, but no, I, 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 so it is all about championships contending for con- cha- uh, championships. And I think that the way to get there is not to intentionally lose. I know you say, you know, it's, it's hard to say you're not intentionally losing when you're trading your two best defensive players. Like that sort of feels to me like they're, oh, they're I mean, intentionally trying to lose. Judon's still on the team, isn't he? I know he's no, hurt. No, I'm, I was talking about, best. I was talking about the commanders. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. So uh, I think you can make an argument. Those are not their two sweats. One of their best. You know, Young's had a solid year. I mean, let me just I, say, I think, let me cut you off. I purposely sure. overstated that to make my point. Okay, because gotcha. uh, uh, I don't know who their best defensive players are. <laughs> do Do you worry that the reason Bill hung on to them is for himself, just himself, yes. and the Shula record? Bingo. Yeah, I think so. Because again, it sort of goes against everything he's preached for two decades plus. Here, I do what's in the best interest of the team. Okay, well, how is this in the best interest of the team? I don't, I don't get it. Also, value, value, value. You know, we want to get value, and nobody, nobody in the history of the league, in my opinion has been able to balance the long-term and the short-term better than Bill Belichick. You know, how many times did he make these deals where you were like, oh man, this, this hurts the team this year. Oh, you know, and I didn't agree with this deal. And again, it's not why you won the Super Bowl, but he got away with it, right? I'm going to trade Logan Mankins. And it doesn't make the team better right now, but it's the right move for us because, you know, he's a declining player. Let's get something for him while we still can he did that stuff all the time, and now it's like he couldn't move Josh Uche. I mean, you have to admit they should have at least moved Uche. I mean, you can tell they don't love him for what a fifth round, for a fifth round to- pick. Yeah, he doesn't totally fit what they do. He, I mean, fifth round pick. Puka Nakua is a, a fifth round pick. The kid letting it up for the Rams. I and love I, that I get, guy. Not every pick is going to be that, but I'm just telling you, well, you wouldn't trade a situational pass rusher who you can tell they like him, but they feel he's limited because he's not great against the run and he doesn't set the edge and he plays about 35% of the snaps. You wouldn't move that guy who, you know, they're not going to sign Yeah, I wouldn't, or like a fifth round pick. I wouldn't have killed him for it, but I'm not killing them on the other side either. I don't, I don't put a tremendous amount of value in the fifth round pick. I just don't. I mean, what can I tell you? But the whole thing about, you know, Bill doing it for, this is where they're at. I mean, by giving him the power, presumably that he still has, he gets to manage it for him versus what, you know, I guess you would perceive as the best long-term, uh, uh, you know, for what's best for the future. And so this is where they are in this spot. And so how, where do you think that goes, Chris? Where do you think we are with – final question before we hit the break. Where do you think we are with Belichick and this season and his future? And you want to throw in the Mike Florio uh, trade to the commanders report? Where do you think we stand with all this today? Yeah, I think it's a situation where Bill is trying to extend his livelihood and his lifespan here as much as he can. And the way to do that, obviously, is to put lipstick on a pig. You know, if you go five and 12, that looks pretty bad. And it makes it easier maybe for you to be relieved of your job uh, or or at least relieved of personnel control. But if it looks kind of like it's looked the last couple of years, it's in that seven to 10 win range then maybe you can sort of spin it to some of your media buddies and talk about, well, hey, you know, we lost Judon. We lost Christian Gonzalez. Bourne had a torn ACL. Had a really tough schedule the first four games of the year, which is true. I mean, I freely admit that. The the first four games of the year, and that was brutal for them. You can maybe spin it a different way, and you sort of claw every win you can to hold on to your power and and to hold on to your ability to chase the Shuler record here. I think – you know, I, I know he'll never say it, but I do think the idea of round numbers means something to him, or at least significant numbers. Next year would be his 25th year coaching the Patriots, his 50th year as an NFL coach overall from when he started with the Baltimore Colts. I think that stuff means something to him, and, and you want to reach that point the same way 45 meant something to to Brady. I mean, why did Brady come back that last year? He could have walked away at, at 44, you know, at the top of his game. So I think that's what it's about. I Do I think he's putting himself ahead of the team at this point or trying to at least um, through some personal sort of agenda 
nudge it in his direction? I absolutely do. So uh, what was I just going to say about this? Uh, listen, I'm putting this on Kraft. I, I'm i fine with them having a strong start and finishing 7-10. and 10. I, Because, you know, oh, by the way, the, some of the teams that have rebuilt around good quarterbacks did not tank. They were just smart. The Chiefs. And the Bills didn't totally tank either. They identified a guy and traded up in the first round, not to number one, but found their guy that way. And I'd rather be that team, Chris. So I'm okay with 7-10. and 10. But this is on Kraft not to get fooled. Finish 7-10 and 10 and still fire him. Because look at the overall arc of the program, the overall direction of the program, the overall state of the team versus the rest of the league. The league is offensive. The league focuses on outside the numbers. Bill's still defensive. He focuses inside the numbers. Look at the state of your roster. So whether you finish 4 and 13 or 7 and 10, it's the same thing. And move on from the coach. So the pressure should be on Kraft not to get duped into thinking a 5 and 4 finish in a 7 and 10 season is suddenly good enough. That's on him. That's not on Bill. It's Bill's job to win games. Chris, just quickly, you so you think Bill's fate is still to be decided? I do. Okay. Yeah. I, 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 that's just, I mean, again, that's not inside information. That's just my feeling that he, there are still things he could do to, um, you know, tilt this thing in his direction, put the thumb on the scale in, in his, because here's why I think so. Cause ultimately then why would you let him make these decisions at the trade deadline? If you weren't at least open to the idea of keeping him and, I, and I'll be honest, I, I want him to stay, but just as the coach, I don't know if he'd be willing to do that. Because I still think he's an excellent coach. I just think they need somebody else to come in here and build a roster for him.